which brings me to our next topic, and I'm just going to turn to you. Sure. We have treatment options. You mentioned uh, laser photocoagulation. Yeah. That was always out there, and mm -hmm. I, as an internist, know that from, from way back. There's surgery, intraocular corticosteroids, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's the anti-VEGF therapies, mm -hmm. which are, in my experience, relatively new on the market, mm -hmm. but very promising stuff. How do you... How do you prioritize these? How do you, do you put them in some sort well, of sequence? Well, in, in this day and age, anti-VEGF therapy or anti-vascular endothelial growth factor therapy is considered first-line treatment. Can for you the say that part. five times fast? I can. <laughs> I knew you could. <laughs> uh, and yeah. and this, this therapy has been pioneered over many, many years, but the past seven or eight years has really been the, the genesis and the usage of this in clinical mm -hmm. practice. Um, it was actually derived from the fact that they did samples of people's eyes and determined this was the factor that was causing a lot of patients developing diabetic retinopathy. And therefore, inhibiting this factor led to a lot of people developing improved diabetic macular edema and improved retinopathy scores as a result of this. In fact, okay. by giving these treatments, you can not only improve diabetic macular edema, but you can improve diabetic retinopathy scores in those patients within those clinical trials. Okay. Um, corticosteroids are another alternative agent. Steroids we're all used to. The biggest problem with steroids is their side effect profile. Uh, cataract and glaucoma are the two big ones. If I may, the problem with steroids is that they're steroids. That's correct. And the glucocorticoid effect doesn't get obviated even with giving these steroids, and that's where this is coming from, okay. both the cataract and the glaucoma okay. perspective. Um, laser photocoagulation is still used on occasion and in combination with the two other therapies I mentioned before. And surgery is a last-ditch option for a lot of patients unless there's other major tractional or changes in the retina that are necessitating that. Uh, it's actually not that same way in other countries. Uh, surgery is actually the primary option, but in this country, typically anti-VEGF and corticosteroids is, is the primary option for treatment. By the way, if I could parse this out a little bit, or you could do it for me, mm -hmm. how much of the problem with steroids is that they are hyperglycemic agents or hyperglycemia-inducing agents, which make the problem potentially worse, as opposed to just the anti-inflammatory agents? You know, when given in the eye, we don't see an increase in systemic blood sugar. So we're actually injecting these medications into the vitreous cavity through the white part of the eye, the sclera. So we really don't see a bump up in, in patients' blood sugar. So this is a primary problem with the direct effect of steroids, not a secondary effect from hyperglycemia. Correct. The cataract and the glaucoma. Right. That's right. So now, if you're going to put these in, a, in some sort of hierarchical order, somebody comes to you with DME, this, this, this shopping list of potentials, the order has shifted. It's, all, it's like uh, re, reorganized itself. Where do you start? So, you know, Peter, we had that same question several years ago, and we actually uh, have a great organization called the DRCR Network. It stands for Diabetic Research Clinical uh, Network, and basically it's a group of uh, about 100 practices in the United States that ask these questions. And, uh, and answer them um, independently. Um, and basically, they wanted to know which is better, laser, laser and steroids, or anti-VEGF therapy with either early laser or alone. It was called the DRCR Protocol Eye Study, and it showed without a doubt that the anti-VEGF therapy was the gold standard. And that really was a sea change for what we do. We no longer now said, maybe laser's better, maybe this patient needs steroids first. Almost everyone now starts with anti-VEGF therapy. There are certain instances where you can add laser and maybe reduce the burden of treatment. Uh, the five-year extension on that study actually showed something pretty amazing, which was we were modifying the disease. So patients in that study the first year received nine injections in the eye of anti-VEGF therapy, but the second year they only received three, and then the third year two, and the fourth year one, and the fifth year no injections. So you saw a decreasing number of injections needed over time to control their diabetic macular edema. Are you actually telling me that you're turning the disease process off with anti-VEGF therapy? Not just the macular edema, but also the diabetic retinopathy. As Rishi said, we see improvements in diabetic retinopathy scores, two-step improvements in patients 30 to 40% of the time, and in the worst patients, those with very severe non-proliferative retinopathy or worse, that can be 60 to 70% of the time that we see a two-step improvement. So you're taking the worst of the worst and you're pulling them out of the fire. 